Hello and welcome back. I get questions often about um, how to collaborate with other Pro Tools users. And unfortunately, the Pro Tools cloud collaboration could be <clears throat> and should be a really cool feature and function, but it's just not um, solid enough to use. It's got great features and it would allow you to share projects with other Pro Tools users, but it's just so flaky. Um, that I can't really recommend it to anybody. So here's another way to easily send a session to someone else that you want to play on. Maybe it's a, you know another uh, musician or a vocalist. You want them to add tracks to this session, but you don't want to send the whole session. You want to be able to email a relatively small file and have them add tracks and not have to worry about the click track and lining things up and do I put the file at the beginning of the session or where do I spot the files? This is an easy method to get around all that. And when they're done, they can send you the entire Pro Tools session back and you can easily import those tracks into your session and they'll line up perfectly with your session. So it avoids all of this back and forth that I think probably all of you have dealt with at one point or another. Here's the example. I've got a session here. It's small. Uh, I don't know, eight or 10 tracks, something like that. It's a combination of audio and MIDI. And what I want to do is I want to create a smaller version of this session with a single stereo file so that the, the musician that's going to play to it can hear it. But it's also going to have all the click information. You'll see that I've put markers up here at the top, verse one, chorus one, etc. I've got chords laid out at the top so that they can easily see what the chord changes are. And there's a tempo change inside the middle of the track. Musically, it doesn't make much sense here, but I put it in here to show that this is all going to go back and forth quite easily. So what I've done here is I've identified the longest track in this session, and I'm just gonna triple click in that track. Triple click selects everything in the entire track, and you'll notice that it's selecting only the uh, the clips, right? So it's not selecting all the way to the beginning of the session, and that's okay. I want this audio file to start right where the song starts. Okay? And that's what I'm gonna send. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to bounce this to disc or bounce mix, and I'm gonna make it a little bit smaller. Remember, I can mix and match bit depths within the same session. This is the file that I'm gonna send via email. Uh, so I want to make it a little bit smaller. I'm going to keep it the same sample rate, but I'm going to make the bit depth a little bit smaller, 16 bit. And I'm going to check this box here, import after bounce. And uh, I'm going to do it offline so that this bounce happens faster than real time. Let's do it. Okay, as a result of checking the import after bounce checkbox, I get this audio import option. And I want to add that file that I just bounced back into this session. And more importantly, I wanna put it on a new track and I want it to, to land at the selection. So the selection that I made, remember previously, I selected all of the content in the single, uh, in the longest track, and that determines where my bounce to disc starts and where my bounce to disc ends. And I want the location of this audio file to land at the selection, not the session start, but at the selection, I'm gonna click OK, and it's gonna put it right here under this keys track, but I'm gonna bounce it down. Well, actually, you can see it's exactly the same length as the selected file, or the, the longest track that I selected a second ago. So I'm gonna bring this down, and I'm gonna uh, select th this track, just this one track, and the click track. I want the click track to go too. I'm gonna choose File Menu, Export Selected Tracks as New Session. And I wanna include audio files, yes. And I wanna include only the selected tracks, which in this case is my bounced file at the very bottom and my click track at the top. And I'm gonna click OK. And I'm gonna put it on my desktop. And it's gonna call, be called, um, Select session collaboration f with vocals. 
I don't know. And I'm going to put it on my desktop. And there it is. Now, what I'm going to do is open that session. So I'm going to uh, open session, go to desktop. Um, it was called session collaboration with vocals. There it is. Boy, my desktop is really messy. And I'm going to open this up. It's going to close the one that's currently open. I'm going to save that. Yes. <clears throat> And there it is. This is the session that was just created as a function of this file menu export selected tracks as new session. So what I've got is a, a bounce to disk of all of the audio of the previous session. I've got the click track in there. I've also got all of the markers and the chord changes. And most importantly, the click track is going to play playback perfectly in time. I don't know if you can hear the click. I'm going to there's the click. So all of the important session information is being carried with this audio file. I'm going to now send this folder, the session collaboration with vocals folder. And inside that folder, it contains the session document, also called session collaboration with vocals and an audio files folder that contains a single file. Let's go take a look at that. I'm going to go out to my desktop here. Well, pay no attention to my messy desktop. Here it is, session collaboration. I'm going to open that up. And here's my audio files folder with the one bounced file. There are no bounced files in this session because I haven't bounced anything in here. Clip groups, all that stuff is, is empty. And here's the session. So the person that I'm collaborating with is going to receive this um, file. And what I would probably do here is I would probably um, zip this or stuff it. So if you're on a Mac, it's really easy to do. I would go session collaboration and compress. And then you would get this little compressed file here. And that's what I would send via email, via Dropbox, via WeTransfer, whatever you want. The, the total size is going to be about 50 megs. Now it is larger than an MP3, but it is smaller than a full session. And more importantly, it's, 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 you know, situated perfectly in this session with the, the click track, the chord changes, the markers, all the important information that anybody's going to want to need or want to see if they're going to add to this session. All right. So second half, stay tuned. I, for your sake, had a change of heart. I'm not going to put vocals on this track. I wouldn't do that to you, but I did add some percussion and a little bit of guitar. And of course, cowbell you gotta have cowbell so the point is is I took this session that was just the single bounced mix of the original session and the click track I added some MIDI parts to it this percussion track here and this instrument track let me name that that's cowbell right there and the bottom is guitar right so here's the original track I want you to hear that right with the click Okay, all good there. But now I want to bring in with that track some of the other performances that I added to it. And basically what I want to verify is that they're playing back in sync, right? So here's the original track. Let me mute these. I'll bring them in one at a time. So here's the original track. And of course the click track is on so that you can verify timing is good. And uh, we'll bring in this percussion. Now this is coming from a plugin called Transfuser. It's just kind of a... I don't know, weird percussion sound. I'll solo it up so you can hear it. All right, kind of weird, subtle stuff, right? Here it is with the track. Okay, all good there. And during the chorus section, and now remember, I have the markers in the song so I can see the layout of this song, verses and choruses. I didn't want that to continue through the chorus. I wanted to add this percussion thing in the chorus section. Let's bring it in with the track to verify synchronization is good. Okay, all good there. Now I'm gonna bring in the cowbell. There's cowbell soloed. You should be able to hear that with a click.
there's click, there's cowbell, here's with the whole track and the percussion. And last but not least, let's bring in some guitar. It's not quantized. No, it's not quantized. <laughs> All right, a little bit of guitar. And again, we're playing with the track. Now, just for, um, you know, because we can, I created a tempo change in the original session before I sent it over. So the bounced audio, uh, the bounce, you know, mix of this includes this uh, tempo change, but it also includes the tempo change right here in the tempo ruler of Pro Tools. So let's go right to that section, and it's just a slight uh, dip in tempo from 104 to 100. But we should hear that everything MIDI and audio that I've added is in sync still. Let's hope. Oh, no percussion there. There's guitar and here's cowbell. Okay, and right when it gets to the end of this chorus, which I can see it up here, hits the verse, the tempo bumps back up to 104. And again, musically speaking, that doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but I just wanted to demonstrate that tempo changes will travel not only with the bounced audio file, but with the session that I'm sending. Okay, so this is good. I am now going to send this back to uh, the original, the originator of this session, which is me in this case. Now, I didn't create too many tracks in here. I created, I don't know, four or five, looks like. And a couple of them are MIDI. A couple of them include audio. I rendered one of the um, loop MIDI tracks into audio because, um, because I just did. I felt like it. So I could include the MIDI. I'm going to send this whole session back to the originator. All right, I'll be right back. I'm now back to the original session, multi-track session, and of course you see at the bottom the bounce track that I created at the bottom. I don't really need that now. I'm waiting for the session that that amazing guitar player and percussionist just created to bring that back in and merge those tracks into my original session. So I don't need this anymore. I'm going to right click on it and choose hide and make inactive. I don't need that anymore. Oops, the click track was there too. Let me uh, make that active again. I wanna keep that. Okay, so um, the added percussion and guitar track session has been delivered back to me and I am going to import session data. Import session data and I'm gonna navigate out to my desktop and you'll see that, whoa, I cleaned up some of it, but not all of it. So here's the session. I labeled it with vocals originally, but I put guitar and percussion on it. Here's the session and I'll click open. And here's all the tracks that uh, I created just a second ago. I'm gonna bring them all in. I don't need the click, it's already in here. I don't need this um, second track. That was my mix down of the original session. So I'm not gonna bring that in. I will bring this in and I'll bring that in and that in. I'm bringing them in as new tracks, right? And cowbell and of course guitar. And that's it. All the other settings in this window, I'm gonna leave at the default and I'm gonna click OK. You know what, actually, I'm gonna select the bottom track because I want these new tracks to land at the bottom. So let's do that again. Import session data. I'll navigate to that session again, and we'll bring in percussion and drum loop and the committed drum loop and cowbell and guitar tracks all as new tracks. We'll click OK. And here they come. <clears throat> All right, so here they are. Um, I'm going to listen to them. So um, we'll play the full track. And uh, first of all, let's just listen to the percussion uh, against the uh, against the click. Okay, so so far that sounds good. Cowbell. All right, let's listen to the whole track. All this stuff against the. Bit. 
Okay, and you'll notice that at the beginning of the session, there's still that space that was originally there. Um, and of course, the guitar track, it has audio all the way to the beginning, but that's because um, I recorded from the very top. But the MIDI and the committed track don't have audio all the way to the top, but they still line up perfectly. So I'm gonna recap this again. Um, the original session, bounce to disc, do a stereo mix down of the entire session, import after bounce. That file comes into the session, spot it to the selection where the selection was made for the bounce, export that track and the click track if you want out to a new session. Send that session out to the whoever it is you wanna collaborate they open up Pro Tools, open up that session, they get all of the tempo information, the chord changes, the markers, and of course the audio track, the mix down. You could send stems if you wanted to, multiple tracks. In this case, I just did one to make it small. And they add their parts, they send that entire session back, including audio files. And I import the, the session into my original session and all the tracks line up perfectly. Hope that helps.